a problem. When somebody asks the question I don't have an answer to, I need to know. Somebody asks, why do we have 52 weeks in a year? Why not 50? Why not some other round number? So I set out to understand why we landed on 52. Not only is 52 not a round number, it doesn't even evenly divide the number of days we have. Every year technically has 52 weeks and a day, and even two days on a leap year. It's really weird that the number of days we have in a year, 365, doesn't evenly divide into the number of days we have, seven. So I realized, better understand why we have 52 weeks, we're going to need to understand where our calendar came from. Start with the concept of days, which is the easiest part. We all know that the Earth rotates around the sun, or at least I hope we do. For the Earth to make a full rotation around the sun, it's roughly 365 days. It actually works out to 365.2422, but we'll get to that in a moment. The amount of days we have in a year is set in stone. It's the time we take to go around the sun and that's not changing. Well, I, I guess it is kind of changing a little because of various drifts and rotations and speed, but beside the point. We're stuck with at least 365 days and some remainder on our calendar. This begs the question, why not 73 weeks, each consisting of five days so that there is no no remainder at the end of the year. 365 days being a year is a fact that humans have known for a very long time. Going back to 3000 BCE, the ancient Egyptians knew there was 365 days in a year. They actually had a calendar of 12 months, each of exactly 30 days, and five remaining festival days at the end of the year that didn't belong to any month. Those were a time of celebration and, and rest. The ancient Babylonians, Sumerians, and Greeks all knew 365 days in a year. By the time we get to the Hellenistic period, Hipparchus and and Ptolemy realized that there was a fraction of a day extra. They rounded it to 0.25. And later in the Roman period, Julius Caesar formalized this in the calendar reforms to formally add the 0.25 extra quarter day to our year. By the Gregorian era, we got even more precise, knowing that that quarter day was actually 0.2422. So it doesn't seem that a lack of understanding of days in the year in our ancient world was what messed up our modern calendar. So that got me thinking, maybe it has something to do with where the number of months came from. With our modern calendar being based on the Gregorian calendar and it being rooted in the Julius calendar, that's a great place for us to start. The Julius calendar is interesting because it's the first place where we see months having either 30 or 31 days, just like our modern calendar. But the Julius calendar only had 10 months. Martius, Aprilis, Maeus, Junius, Quintilis, Sextilis, September, October, November, December. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Those astute at math might realize that leaves us with 61 days missing. Does that mean that the Julius calendar had less days in a year than our current calendar? No, it had the other 61 days, but they weren't part of any particular month. At the time, they were just referred to as winter. It wasn't until Noma Pompilius, the second king of Rome, added Januarius and Februarius that we got to the 12-month calendar. Historically, this calendar started its year in Martius, or March. Until in the Julius reforms, Julius Caesar decided that the calendar should start in January, given that Janus was the god of beginnings. Fun fact, it was the Romans who kind of messed up our calendar to begin with, not in the way that we're looking for, but in other ways. Adding those extra two months meant that September wasn't the seventh or sept month. December is no longer the tenth month, it's now the twelfth. But they also changed a couple of the names around. We no longer have Quintilis or Sextilis as months, because in the Julius reforms, Julius Caesar decided that he should honor himself and renamed the month of Quintilis to Julius, or as we now know it, July. And following Julius Caesar's death, his great name nephew, you who took over and became Emperor Augustus, changed the month of Sextilis to August. So while the actions of the Roman calendar did mess up a lot of things, it was mainly naming and not the numbers that we're worried about. Finally, this leaves us with the number of days in a week. That's the only possible place that we could be looking for weirdness and why we have 52 weeks in a year. At first pass, you might think, much like I did, that seven days probably has some sort of root in Abrahamic religions. But actually, the tradition of seven days in a week goes back even further. It goes back to the ancient Babylonians. The ancient Babylonians were some of the earliest astronomers, and a lot of their faith and cultural practices were based on what they saw in the heavens above. And this is one of the reasons that seven became an important number for them. They also created a lunar-based calendar. This calendar consisted of four seven-day periods based on the observable patterns of the moon in the night sky. It's likely because of those phases of the moon that seven became a prevalent number throughout culture and religion. Next time we see this come into play is in the Abrahamic religions with the Jewish faith, where the book of Genesis suggests that God created the world in six days and rested on the seventh, giving the Jewish people their Sabbath. Because of this adoption of a seven-day cycle in Abrahamic religions, most major empires around that time period
period had a seven day week. In fact, one of the only influential empires at that time that didn't have a seven day week was the Romans with their eight day nundinal cycle. However, by the time we get to Emperor Constantine the Great in 321 CE, Christianity was rapidly spreading across the Roman Empire. And so Constantine decreed that the days of the week inside the Roman Empire would be moved to seven. And being the most widespread empire at that time and the origin point for much of modern government, culture, and structure, the rest is history. So this is where we come to the awkward point. On the one hand, we have seven day cycles. On the other day, we have 365.2422 days. Both are well rooted in our history and culture and don't seem to be going anywhere. So what's the answer to why we have 52 weeks in a year? It's not some mathematical reason or particular planning like you would think. It's just that the time that it takes us to move around the sun and the observable cycle of the moon from Earth don't align, meaning we are forced to divide 365.2422 by seven, giving us 52 point one seven seven four six and headaches for centuries to come. So why are there 52 weeks in a year? There's no good reason. Because we watched the moon and it did some stuff. Along the way, nobody thought to fix this.